Hey, hello everyone, my name is Jason Cavalleris. I'm gonna kick things off with some slides introducing largely a focus on the AI capabilities we've added into Cognitive Analytics. So according to a recent PwC study, organizations are having a really hard time recruiting at the sufficient level of expertise personnel who can capture findings in the increasing volumes of data that the organizations are storing. So this really points to a great opportunity for software to kind of fill the gap in that missing skill set and to lower the technical barrier to entry to capturing those findings found within the data. It was 2015, December 2015, that we unveiled Cognos Analytics version 11. This is where we really raised the bar on self-service analytics. Leveraging the same Cognos platform that had been matured over the, the previous 10 plus years, added a lot of great self-service, made it really easy to create beautiful looking dashboards that answer your questions, as well as the self-service data preparation. September 28th was when we first uh, released Cognos Analytics 11.1 on cloud. It became generally available, including to install on-premise November 23rd. It's the first time we've had true AI and predictive visualizations and, and other functionality that you'll see shortly right out of the box with no integration necessary. 11.1 was a big release. We took a break from our continuous release cycle where we were typically releasing new features quarterly. To have one big release that was over a year in development, part of that was the importance of adding uh, an AI foundation and the predictive capabilities that just took longer than a normal cycle and required some software architectural changes. So as part of this big release, we addressed dozens and dozens of the top requests for enhancement. We're building AI and advanced analytics, natural language processing right on top of the same Cognos platform that has been in development for 15 plus years now. We're continuing to invest in things like managed reporting, you know, so you can schedule a report that gets distributed to thousands of different recipients, each viewing only the data that they're supposed to. The robust metadata modeling capabilities, of course, governance and security of the utmost performance for an enterprise scale application like Cognos. So right on top of that, we're adding AI to guide the user, showing them the, the insights that they may not have found on their own. For us, it, it largely means automating what were traditionally manual tasks. Uh, this is very important in data preparation. These augmented intelligence capabilities really broaden the sphere of users able to do their own analytics, connect to data, merge different types of data together, understand what trends they're, they're seeing, and then share the results with their colleagues, really anyone who needs to see that same information. So with this really big release, 11.1, the three big areas we're trying to make improvements on was uh, preparation, whether it's data preparation or actually preparing, you know, your, your visualizations, your presentation interface of your findings. So that's both AI assisted as well as just adding more features that allow you to do new types of things relate to, to data preparation and beyond. Analyzing the data, so you'll see we've introduced a whole new user experience ad hoc data exploration, and then being able to, to share all your findings across the board, including uh, via Slack. Cognos Analytics plays important parts of what we call the analytics life cycle. It's really the, the what and the why, so that would be the descriptive and the diagnostic, and that's the out-of-the-box Cognos experience. In 11.1, the main thing we did is make it much easier and faster to create those pixel-perfect operational reports that are mission critical to so many organizations. It's gonna save many hours to those professional report authors. We're still moving forward and investing on delighting each of these types of profiles of users. Cognos has a long history, particularly with the, the data consumers, but we're not done yet. 